and goes on in these stories of Raphael, John the Baptist, and Elijah to talk about this relationship that these beings have with the moon and the moon beings. So I'm not going to go into it. I'm not going to hit these slides, but the Egyptian myths and mysteries go into it, and so does the outline of occult science mention all of this. So in there, a time will come when the evolution of the earth and mankind will advance so far that the spiritual beings and powers that had to sever themselves from the earth during the Lemurian age in order to make possible the continued progress of burst beings will be able to reunite themselves again with the earth. These are the beings who realized that the forces that they took away with the moon were slowing down. The ones that left with the sun realized it was going too fast for humanity. So they left, that slowed things down, but it was going too slow, so the moon had to leave. And that gave us the right speed of evolution. Tomorrow we'll be talking about velocity a lot when you look at wavelengths and resonance and so on. So he goes on, the moon will then reunite, reunite with the earth. This will occur because at that time a sufficiently large number of human souls will possess so much inner strength that they will use these moon forces for the benefit of further evolution. But if we have no physical existence, think about what that means. Further evolution. So we can't bemoan the fact that this is going to happen. So he keeps telling us this. And then um, good, the good humanity will, through the development, acquire the use of the moon forces and thereby so to transform the evil part. So human beings are going to have a free choice. And some are going to choose to go a path that we can say is evil. But I'm going to tell you some a little secret here. It won't sound evil at the time. They won't think that they're picking an evil path. But these beings of Araman and Lucifer will offer to humanity <coughs> more than the fourth principle. They will offer manas or buddhi or atma to human beings. They will offer to human beings to become angels but angels way too early. They will offer us to become very high spiritual beings, and if we accept that, we will be retarded for a long period of time, or held back. I don't really like this word retarded. Mm -hmm. Bad connotations. But we will be unable to fulfill our destiny because we will be too weak at this fourth principle, this principle of the I am. We do not develop, really develop manas until the Jupiter time. And in that sixth and seventh epoch, we will be offered the rest of humanity's development in future times. We will be offered it early. That's what evil will be giving. And many people will say this is much better and what the Christ offers us. I'll take that. And so we will not be able to work effectively on Jupiter. But we will have human beings who will be working with these retarded human beings to help them. So mankind, and you've heard this many times from many great speakers, many Great sages have said the human is both a god and a god in becoming. A fallen god. A god of the earth and a god of the heavens. We will become the tenth hierarchy when all of this is done. Lucifer is here to understand, is here understood as a fallen god who instills in man the desire for personal knowledge. And this sets mankind in opposition to the divine will, which has created him in his image. Rosicrucian science explains the role of Lucifer in the world 
Know, O human, that through thy being flows a current which ascends and a current which descends. So to be fully human, we have to do this from here on. We have to stay in balance, and as we ascend, a part of our consciousness needs to descend. And this is our Rosicrucian. This is our connection to those who will be retarded angels, but also our connection to be able to be the guardian angels of those who will be human at the Jupiter stage. We need to descend as well as ascend. And so what does that mean in this diagram? Well, have we reached bottom? Steiner says that when we end Earth, the mineral kingdom will dissolve away. He also says something fascinating. He says that it will be higher beings who will take on that role to dissolve it away. And all that we develop in technology, which is spiritualizing the mineral world, will become a really difficult task for the higher spiritual beings to dissolve that. Because we will have spiritualized the mineral kingdom that they have to dissolve. Do you get that picture? It's a fascinating one. So by technology, we are giving resistance to these good spiritual beings whose role it will be to be the garbage collector, so to speak, at the end, and collect the plant kingdom, the animal kingdom, and the human kingdom, and take us into Pralaya, the rest period before we start Jupiter. And then they have to come back and dissolve away all the mineral kingdom. And that helps their evolution. And that helps their evolution. So we are helping their evolution by making it more difficult for them. So we will be the new angels on Jupiter, but there's something below that. And um, as we were the nuisance to those who are our guardian angels today, so we have beings who will become increasingly a nuisance for us. And just as our angels will follow us to the depths that we go, we will also need to connect to those who will be human on Jupiter in a similar loving and devoted way. And now we can understand in the Lord's Prayer what it means after we come to our daily bread by forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. We have great debt to those who are the angels and what we did when they were on old moon on the human stage. And we have our debtors, those who will be human on the Jupiter stage. And as we can forgive them, we will so be forgiven. So where do we go? Well, we'll develop Manas on Jupiter. We will develop Bodhi on Venus. We will develop Atma on Vulcan. But in each of these, a progression continues downward to those beings who will be at the human stage on each one of these. So we go up to an angelic level, an archangelic, and an archive level. And when we reach that, the hierarchy will be tenfold, elevenfold, or twelvefold higher. And for us, that brings a completion. That's why the sevenfoldness becomes twelve for the earth in the middle. After that, things change, but it doesn't mean that this stops. But this is, for us, the picture. For the angels, there was a previous one back here that's part of their picture, and it goes up like this. So, I'm going to ask you some questions. What is it that you feel we have to rest from Araman? And as the East had to deal with Lucifer and take something, what is it that you think we need to take from Araman as part of the Western path? And the next question for you is what role do these great teachers of humanity play in this trauma with Araman? How do you think they have?
help us prepare? Can they work with Lucifer to help us counteract our own mind, to warm our technologies? I had people tell me, I love my Apple. I love the internet. And any of you who remember early PCs can understand what they meant. There's robots out there that people are trying to humanize. They will become our pets, our companions. Children will be given a toy in the hospital that will watch over them throughout their childhood years and accompany them so that mom and dad always know where their child is. Think about that. Can we grow to love our robotic pets? And what happens to the earth in all of this? If we are disconnected from physical bodies, Will we have some connection to avatars? Will we have some avatar that we can somehow incarnate and use that robotic body as our own body? Spanish says something very interesting. Because there will come a time in the future when human beings will see what is physical for them as merely a vehicle for their time on Earth. And they will be so removed from it as a sense of their self that for another person who needs to have a body like this to fulfill some karmic debt, they will offer it to them. And they will use their body as a vehicle. Avatar. The fact that people have thought about this doesn't surprise me. So when we're creating virtual reality, where is this creation happening? Can anybody point to where virtual reality is? Is virtual reality as much in computer, some supercomputer, as thoughts are in our brain? So if we have no physical bodies, will we be here at all? Where will we be? Any thoughts, anyone? Yeah, I think like with the virtual reality now, they were discovered, I think, uh, through Skype, where when you touch yourself, the other person would feel as if you're touching him. And again, like it's very, Creepy, but, uh... creepy, did you say? Yeah. yeah. There are suits, and I'm going to actually talk about this a lot more, um, well, in a, in a minute, <laughs> um, that people can put on where, as you are pointing out, you can feel the other person and you can give them a massage through the internet. They have to have the suit, too. But they have to have the suit, too. Yeah. No you fun. You have to have special gloves and that kind no, of stuff. No fun. <laughs> okay. I want you all just to stand up, take a breath, because the next 20 minutes, we are going to go through something. You don't